Now we have the continuation of Shivana Azmi's appearance at the National Museum of Women in the Arts in Washington, D.C. during their 25th anniversary. We showed you the first part last week. Here's more from the question and answer session. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and a part of your life with us. It was very, very interesting. I have two questions, if I may. The first one is, what's next for you in terms of films and in terms of social issues that you would like to tackle? And my second question is related to a social issue in India, which I think is probably not so rampant now in the urban areas, but still in the smaller towns and villages, and that relates to killing of female fetuses and uh, female infanticide. So what kind of social activism is taking place in India around that, and are you involved in that cause? Um, I just talk, um, Asim just mentioned that I'm doing three films. Uh, that is uh, Midnight's Children, Reluctant, fundamentalism and Matruki Bijli Ka Mandola. And the point that you've raised is a very important point. And I'd like to begin by prefixing that India is a country that lives in several centuries simultaneously. So we have people living back to back in the 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st century. And her people at any time and place encapsulate all the contradictions that come from being a, a multicultural, multi-religious, multi-dimensional uh, society. And so it is with the position of women. So on the one hand, you have this unprecedented reality that we have a woman president, we have a woman speaker of the house, we have a woman leader of the ruling party, we have a woman leader of the opposition. There are several chief ministers who are women. Women are in huge corporate uh, positions and they are really, really becoming central to the power structure. On the other hand, it is also true that female feticide is still being practiced in India. And uh, I would like to correct you on the perception that it is not only restricted uh, to the rural areas, it is also being practiced in uh, metropolitan cities such as Mumbai and Delhi and Haryana and Punjab and Gujarat and all these things. And it comes really from a patriarchal structure that puts value on land and sees woman, a, a girl, as a liability rather than an asset. Firstly, I think we need to have zero tolerance for that and we need much more work in the area. Laws are in place, but to date, I think there's just been one doctor who has been convicted for sex selection because there's a law in place that says you cannot indulge in sex uh, selection, but there is malpractice everywhere. But what comes from it is a much deeper social malaise that comes from a patriarchal structure that still thinks of girls as a liability. And we need to work towards that mindset change. And the way of doing it is manifold. One, of course, to get the act together uh, to get the law in place to make sure that there is zero tolerance for it and for all of society to come forward and say that this is no longer true. That this is not true and it cannot be tolerated for which we need a huge awareness campaign which I am happy to say has uh, started. We need to take it much further than that. Hi ma'am, uh, my name is Prashant. I'm a student of the American University pursuing my master's in film. Um, you and Javed Saab are one of the zillion reasons why we're all proud of being Indians. Thank you. And uh, ma'am, my question to you is, um, there is, India is growing economically and there is a huge influence of the Western culture on India. What do you think we as a society should do to protect our traditional art forms? Is there, is there a problem of the mindset or is, do you think the government should do something to incorporate protect these art forms by introducing them in the education system? Um, I mean, I'm talking about the art forms like Yakshagana in South India, or like not just the Bharatanatyam and Kuchpuri, which are popular, but there are so many other traditional art forms in rural India. So what do you think the government could do uh, to protect these art forms? Well, I think the government is doing 
what it can to protect the arts, but it's not really for the government to start protecting the arts. There's a whole feeling. In fact, there's a point of view that says that, you know, art exists in the people, and the more interference from the government, the more it is going to be relegated into the academies that are built, and it will never move beyond that. But I think that there's a huge opportunity today, because as the world shrinks and becomes a global uh, village, we have started recognizing that we need to understand cultures within their own paradigms rather than yardsticks from the West that are imposed on uh, the East. And so it's now becoming a two-way process. So just as one time when sat satellite television wasn't there, we only learned about Western culture, this is a huge opportunity for us to say, all right, now the world has opened up and we can pr uh, give our culture here. And I think if we seize that opportunity, and we have to do many things actually with it. First, on the government level, we need to have a, a national cultural policy, which we do not have. And on the other hand, it is inevitable that youngsters today will, um, will seize what is their idea of contemporary hip hop, um, which they recognize as their own language. But until and unless we work to see that we strengthen our roots so that our own traditional arts become part of our DNA, so that then when we move up from there, we are talking about very firm roots so that the branches can then take wing and have lots of fruit. So it's something that we all need to do and recognize that it is a uh, strength. Uh, the fact that you're asking me the question uh, gives me hope because I believe change lies with the young. And if the young can be interested in that question, then the answers will be found. My name is Madhavi, and I am a film student at American University also. And um, I'm hoping to make films someday that preserve the classical performing arts of India. And I was wondering, do you think that film is a good way to bring about change in society? And how do you suggest? I can't understand. Is film a good way to? Film? Is film but a good film way? A, of course, film is a very, very good way uh, to bring about uh, change. But, you know, what, what has commonly been, see, I think even when it comes to women, I think it is important to have positive images of women when we are talking about change. Now, there isn't something that comes directly out of a film. When you watch a film on Mahatma Gandhi and you get very moved by it, you don't start behaving like Mahatma Gandhi the next day. <laughs> but what happens is subliminally a change starts taking place, and especially if there's a critical number of films that take up an issue, then it is absolutely possible for change uh, to occur. And I wouldn't impose that on every single filmmaker. I think there is perfect validity in saying that we don't want to make a film about social change. We want to make a film that entertains, and that's perfectly valid. So to each his own. But I think, and that's the kind of film that I've been involved in, because I think the film is a very powerful uh, medium of bringing about social change, not within the parallel cinema, where you are preaching to the already converted, mm -hmm. but within mainstream cinema, which reaches out to a large number of people. So if you look over the years, there has been a change in the way women are being portrayed in Hindi cinema. If you look at earlier, if you look at the 60s, uh, Mai Chup Rahungi, I mm -hmm. Will Remain Silent, was considered a virtue for women. Uh, then after that, that changed. And in the 80s, we got a lot of films that but they weren't really about women at all. They were, so I'm fond of saying that first there were Rambos and then there were Rambolinas. <laughs> but there was nothing to do with the real change that a woman had. You were in a film called Mrityu Dand. Mrityu Dand, uh, Mrityu Dand, to a great extent, I agreed with. I didn't agree with the end. Okay. Because if the woman is going to pick up the gun right. as a way of seeking revenge, she's not doing anything differently the man is doing. from yeah. the man is doing. And I do believe that women need uh, to be empowered. They constitute half the world, and they want to participate in the decision-making process. But I hope that women when they get empowered, 
will transform the very notion of power itself so that it becomes about sharing power rather than the powerful dominating the meek because then society will not change in any way at all. So when you're talking about a woman and if she's going to pick up the gun, then I have problems with that. I think there are other ways that she has to seek. So that was the problem mm -hmm. with Brit mm -hmm. Hey like girls, I expected you to clap when I gave you such a wide Yeah, question. I was going to actually. <laughs> Um, hi, my name is Ritanj. I'm also a student at American University. Um, when I think about a different star in India that's trying to bring about a lot of social change, I think about Amir Khan, and especially his new show, uh, Satya Mev Jayate. Uh, my question to you is, have you ever thought about collaborating with him to bring about change in India, and what, what are your thoughts about him? I think Amir Khan is doing something quite amazing with Satya Mev uh, Jayate, with this TV program that he's... Um, uh, doing which talks about social uh, social ills and uh, uh, there has been a huge huge response uh, to it it's huge for a mainstream uh, star to come and talk about these issues and the research on it is wonderful I'm very happy that my brother Baba Azmi is the cameraman is the director of photography really? okay. on the <laughs> film so there's that relation there are many people who are from our group um, with various organizations that I worked with that, uh, that are working on that show. I really do think it is the possibility of bringing about uh, social change. And very soon, Javid Akhtar and myself will be doing a similar uh, talk show on television. So we hope you're going to expand it. Hello, I'm Manjula Kumar. I'm at the Smithsonian Institution, where years ago we had a season for Shabana. Uh, my question is, I think perhaps, Shabana, you were the first Indian actor to work with Western directors. Madame Sozatska was mentioned, City of Joy, and La Nui Bengali, which was made. And I was wondering if you would share with us the differences that you felt working with Western directors, and also uh, the collaborative films that have been made recent, more recently. What's your assessment, say, of uh, Slumdog Millionaire, or more recently, The Exotic Marigold mm -hmm. Hotel, the collaboration. Sometimes the Indian um, actors tend to get caricatured. So where does this working together come out? Well, I think that India is really becoming the flavor of the season and people are uh, getting more and more interested in India, which is very uh, nice. And although people have issues with Slumdog Millionaire, I really liked uh, the film. I, and as somebody responsible who works in the slums, I thought that it had a certain energy. And we shouldn't be shy of the fact that there are certain uh, unpleasant aspects that get revealed because the first way of dealing with a problem is not by pushing it under the carpet but saying that it exists. It shouldn't, uh, uh, the problem that somebody is showing slums is not a problem. The fact that slums exist is the problem. So we have to get into the process to see that they don't uh, exist. Now when it comes to the exact uh, exotic uh, marigold, I thought it was a really charming uh, film, but there is much more in India. There is a vibrancy in India today, which, which will have to come from us if we want to. You see, what has happened is for so long we have been so comfortable. We've got a billion people. Okay, we made the largest number of films in the world, and we are so comfortable with the audiences that we've had that we've never sort of tried to make a film which is for also for a wider appeal. Mm -hmm. And now as we are opening up more and more, we will have to decide what it is that we want to give to the world that is international but is rooted in India. Because if we are going to make films exactly like international films already are, there's nothing very, uh, uh, there's, there's no USP of ours that is being used. So first we need to work that out, what our identity is, and recognize that any collaboration, whether it is with the West or the East, is the way to go forward. Because as the world shrinks and becomes a global village, we need to work together and draw from each other's strengths. For me, uh, working in Hollywood has been always a very learning and an energizing experience.